The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. The Catholic TV Network welcomes and invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim the victory of Jesus over death until He comes in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome to our liturgy today as we gather during this Easter week to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. It's wonderful to have you with, you, with, you, with us. I'm Father Bob Connors with Ida, and we always enjoy celebrating the liturgy with you. Let's take a moment to ask the Lord to help us to celebrate well. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord, have you mercy. came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Lord, have you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, have May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And the man, crippled from birth, was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg, uh, beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand Hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. 
So we went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. As the octave of Easter continues, the octave meaning that for eight days it is liturgically Easter Sunday, the readings offer some essential elements of what we believe and how we believe. The road to Emmaus is unique because it actually teaches us how we learn and how we can pray. It's a wonderful education moment, but also we can apply it to how we pray each day. This was the disciples' sort of process of learning. First, admitting what we know and what we don't know. The disciples were conversing about all the things that had occurred. Humility grounds our prayer life. Jesus initiates the encounter. What are you discussing as you walk along? Jesus invites us to face reality with honesty. They stopped looking downcast. God connects with us long before we connect with God. Third, Jesus listens. What things? Our prayer can begin with a simple dialogue defining where we are and where we hope to go. Then Jesus responds. In our prayer, we trust that when we ask and seek and knock, Jesus will respond to us, even it may, may not be the response that we want. But it is what God wants. They learn in Jesus' review of the scriptures that God has a plan that is not my will, but God's will. Fifth, perseverance counts. At prayer, there will be fruitful moments and not so fruitful moments. We need patience with ourselves and with God. Inviting Jesus to be with us, after all, they urged him, stay with us. And the lesson continued. And fifth and sixth, the real grace. Our best interaction with Jesus is in the Eucharist, which opens our minds and our hearts and our souls. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Then they got up returned to Jerusalem and shared their experience. In other words, our prayer should lead us to action, to doing something. And finally, the final lesson. Prayer and grace continues at every single Mass. He is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. And let us pray. Gracious and loving God, during this Easter week, we ask you with great faith and confidence to hear our prayers and petitions. For this, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a thankful prayer life that draws us closer to the will of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to move from our prayer to action, spreading the good news that Christ is risen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they share the joy of resurrection. 
for those who are sick, may they be healed. For those who are needy, may their needs be met. For those suffering war and violence, may they find peace and hope in our troubled world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for sending your Son into the world to not only suffer for us, but also to rise from the dead, to give us the hope that we need in our world, our country, ourselves. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands and praise and glory his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for reconciliation for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and religious, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you today. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray now in the words that our risen Lord has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
and let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Once again, always great to have you with us. Thank you for praying with us today. And have again a wonderful and happy Easter. God bless you all. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.